What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the Home Theater Hobbies. And today I have my full review of the Earthquake Sound Mini Me DSP P12. This is a 12 inch sealed subwoofer with DSP built in. Now I did do an unboxing of this a few weeks ago. And for those of you who've been waiting for this review, sorry it's taking me so long. I just had a few other things I had to do and just other stuff with life going on. But I've got it here. I played with the DSP on, I played with it off, and I'm gonna talk about it in this video. So let's get to it. The Mini Me DSP P12 is a dual 12 inch sealed subwoofer. It has a 12 inch active driver and a 12 inch patented passive radiator. It has a built in 600 watt class D amplifier with a frequency response from 18 Hertz to 115 Hertz. It is 15 and a quarter inches tall, 17 and a quarter inches wide and 15 inches deep and it weighs 39 pounds. The P12 costs $1,399. So here I am with the Mini Me DSP P12. And as you can see, I'm wearing my white gloves because this does have a piano black surface finish. So it does attract a little bit of fingerprints and I wanted to keep it as clean as I can. But as you can see, this is the basically the front of the subwoofer and it's got piano black down here on the bottom along with the feet. But on this side is a 12 inch active driver and on this side is a 12 inch passive driver with the amplifier and all the connections being back here. So you can kind of set this up how you want. Um, if you turn it around with the active driver facing you, you can see that you have the mini me logo right there. And this has a nice cloth grill. Now the grill is connected via a pin and cup design. So you can pull it off and you've got the pins and the cups on each one of the corners. And there's a little ball here edge here on the, um, into the pin so it gets a nice solid connection the grill itself is nice and solid and sturdy you can see through it it's pretty nice now that the cloth grill is off you can see that beautiful 12 inch active driver it's got earthquake there in the center of the dust cap it's got nice thick rubber here and it has borne in the usa on the surround around the driver along with these screw holes right there Turning this around, you can see the passive driver also has a cloth grill, but no Mini Me logo up top. You pull it off because it has the same pin and cuff design, still sturdy, all those things are nice. But you can see that the passive driver actually looks different than the active driver on the other side. It does have the Earthquake logo there in the dust cap in the center, but it's also got a little bolt there that I'll talk about in a second. That's pretty exciting. Talk about that in the feature section. Um, the rubber surround is actually a little bit, uh, let's say extrudes a little bit more out of the case. It's a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, but it's still nice and thick. And it has borne in the USA on the surround around the driver itself. Moving on to this side of the subwoofer, this is where all the business is. This is the amplifier. This is where all the connections are. As you can see, it's got Earthquake Mini Me. It's also got that 600 watts of peak power labeled there on the back. Down there at the bottom is the main power connection. It does come with a power cable, uh, the main power switch off and on. And then next to that is the uh, voltage selector for your country, either 110 or 220. And it's already covered up, so you don't have to worry about messing that up. Uh, up above up here is the volume indicator. This is just a little readout to tell you what volume you're at. Uh, just below that are line level connections, both in and out. The in is, is what you're going to use to connect to your AV receiver. So you can use a single uh, cable in, so subwoofer out to your AV receiver with a Y splitter on the end. So you can go both left and right connections here. And then again, you've got two, so you can go out to another subwoofer if you need to. Uh, just below that is the main volume knob. And I like this knob because it actually has little stops in there so you can kind of dial in your volume. But the kind of an interesting thing about this is it spins all the way around, which I just found to be interesting. Uh, next to that is a frequency adjustment from 40 to 160 Hertz. So you can adjust that here in the box or you can use the app that I'm gonna talk about in the features section. Next to that is the phase adjustment, zero or 180. Uh, just above that is a DSP on off switch because this does have BSP with an app that I'm gonna talk about in the features section. Um, and that's how you turn it on or off for this particular subwoofer. And uh, just above that is the secondary power switch off, auto or on. Typically I always leave my subwoofers in auto mode so that when they receive a signal, they will turn on. And then once they stop receiving a signal for 10 to 15 minutes, they automatically turn off and save you power. 
uh, just above that is an IR input connection because this does have a little cable that it comes with so you can do an IR remote and this remote controls things like volume and mute. Just above that is a little button. It says pairing and you push this button just in case you have issues pairing with the iWoofer app. Again, that I'll talk about in the features section. And the final thing back here is this little power indicator. Green if the subwoofer is on and red if the subwoofer is off. So in the design category, I give the Mini-Me an eight out of 10. I like the piano gloss black surface finish. I think it looks nice. It will have to be clean, you know, pretty regularly though to keep everything looking quite nice. And I like the fact that this is a relatively small cabinet. It's around 15 inches cubed, and so it's not gonna be big and opposing in your room. And I honestly even like the fact that they've, to a certain extent, placed function over form. And what I mean by that is with the driver and amp placement. You've got your active driver on one side, you have your passive driver on the other side, and then you have to put the amp somewhere and the connection somewhere so it happens to be on this side of the case. But when you place this in your room, if you have the active driver pointing at your room, you may have the passive driver pointing at the wall and you want to make sure you're far enough away from the wall. But you also have the is issue of you have cables coming off of one side. What side do you want it? Now you can turn the driver around so that your subwoofer looks like this with a driver on each side and the non-amp facing your main listening position, but you'll have to pick that out on your own. But again, I like the fact that they chose function over form in this case, so you got better air balance inside the case. Now one thing I wish was a little different is I wish the screw in the middle of this driver was color matched to the driver. It does have function, I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but I wish it was color matched. I wish it was black along with the driver. Yes, you can keep the grill on and you don't have to see it or you can turn the subwoofer around, you don't have to see it. I mean, I guess you could even paint it, you know, spray paint it, you know, obviously tape off the driver, but spray paint it or whatever so it would be color matched. But again, I wish it came color matched with the driver. But I think Earthquake has done a good job with the mini -Me, so I give it an eight out of 10 for this. Design. Now let's move on and talk about features. And there are two features that I'm pretty excited to talk about. The first one being this passive driver right here. Now passive drivers are basically drivers that don't have a voice coil or magnet attached. They use the air inside the cabinet to move them forward and back. And that air, you know, movement forward and back is driven by the active driver, which on this case is on the other side of the cabinet. But what Earthquake has done is they've added their patented slaps technology. And what that means is they've added weight to the center of this driver. And this weight is actually symmetrical, so the forward and back motion are identical. So you don't get any extra base and it kind of helps tighten everything up just a little bit. But the main benefit and the thing that I like about this is they've tuned it so that this actually gives you more bass at lower frequencies. So this acts as a sealed box at higher frequencies, but as the frequencies go lower, the passive radiator takes over even more and gives you more output. One of the things that they say on the uh, Earthquake EU site is it can give up to plus six dB of output. And obviously, if you're buying a subwoofer, you definitely want a bit more output. So that is a definite plus. Now let's talk about the second feature that I like, and that is DSP. To apply DSP to the Mini Me, you're going to need one of two apps. The first is the iWoofer app. You can use that, it's available on the Google Play Store and the Apple App Store for free. Now, there's also a pro version known as iWolfer Pro, and that adds the ability to do room correction, but that's only available on the Apple App Store for about $5. And I use the iWolfer Pro app, and I actually used it here on my iPad. I did try it on my um, iPhone, and it didn't work. Um, it, the app would crash, it was just really buggy, and I, I couldn't figure out what was going on. So I did contact uh, Earthquake, and I asked them if they'd had similar issues. They said no try another Apple device. I tried it on my iPad. It works smooth, no crashes. It's just great. So here it is on the app. And what the app does is again, for this one, it applies a room correction. So it tries to take out some of those peaks and nulls and some of that stuff that you just don't want in your room. Now, the best way to correct a room is obviously to go with uh, room treatment, treat the room as much as you can. And then you want to use something like this, because if you have a horrible room, let's say you've got your subwoofer in a bathroom with towel everywhere, there's only so much room correction can do, and it's not really going to fix some of those issues. But anyways, I digress. So um, this connects to the Mini-Me via Bluetooth. And as you can see here, I have it pulled up. I've got the subwoofer connected and it's on. And I just find the device and it connects. And there are a lot of features in here. Uh, a couple of cool things are the, uh, here is the S. 
HS control and this is subharmonic synthesizer. This basically helps restore bass to tracks that are older and may have lost some of the bass. Uh, the recording may have lost some of the bass, so it tries to restore that. That's kind of cool. There's some delay control, phase control, and some other stuff in here. Um, as you can see, I have room correction right here, so we'll talk about that. But there's also this crossover control right here, and this basically uh, gives you an adjustable. Um, high pass and low pass filters as far as you can adjust the frequency uh, by just moving it over like that and also the slope up to 48 db uh, per octave so it gives you a lot of flexibility there's also parametric eq in here so you can actually eq the sub where you want it according to the frequency you can choose a frequency and you can add a little bit more there you can take some out you can just do a lot of stuff and I think you can add up to, I think they said 25 bands of EQ. So that's really cool. So here back at the main menu, you have the room correction here and there is a wizard and it runs you through. You're gonna start with a near fill measurement, uh, take a few of those near the subwoofer, then you're going to put it in your main listening position and you're gonna take a few measurements there. Now it's mainly focused on the main listening position. This isn't you know, going around your room and taking you know, 27 different measurements around your room. It's only gonna focus on a few square feet, but it'll do a good job in those few square feet. And you can tell it what type of curve that you want to use for the room correction. Now the first type of response that you can go with is known as boomy region. And what that does is it tries to maintain the original kind of sound of your subwoofer below 70 hertz, that punch that it has below 70 hertz, while it's correcting some of those room responses above that, some of the higher frequency stuff that you kind of don't want anyway. Uh, the next one is known as near field response and basically what it does is it takes the subwoofer response that it took you know at the position of your subwoofer and tries to put them in your main listening position so you can go with that and then there's also a linear response and that's going to get you closer to a flat response probably closer to more closer to reference let's say um and get you a nice tighter sound and i tried all of those and i'll talk about um my results in the sound quality section the app's user interface is not the prettiest but it definitely works but i like it because again you can do all of these things with an app you can sit in your listening position and you can mess around with all of the different controls and you can also save these as presets because i have different options here and you can go through and you can pick your different presets linear boomy um, there's a default near field and you can have a music preset a movie preset it gives you a lot of functionality and i think that's one of the best features that this subwoofer has so i give the mini me a nine out of ten for features. I like the passive radiator technology. I like the fact that adding that weight gives you that extra base. I mean, you're buying a subwoofer, so getting any extra base is definitely a plus, especially that good low base. Um, I forgot to mention that you can buy these drivers by themselves from Earthquake Sub. A YouTube user known as Vicious Poodle has done it to his subwoofers, and I'll put a link to one of his videos in the description below. But I also like the fact that you get the DSP built in with the iWoofer and iWoofer Pro apps. Obviously you need the iWoofer Pro to do room tuning, but otherwise I like the fact that it gives you extra features. Now one of the things I wish they would add is a bit more buttons to the remote. I would like to have a DSP button on the remote so you can turn the DSP on and off right from the seat of your couch versus having to get up and switch it on and off. I also wish they'd add high level inputs to the amp on the back. That way, if you need to do speaker level, you can do it. But otherwise, again, I think they've done a good job. So nine out of 10. Now we're gonna move on and I'm going to play an audio sample just so you can hear that the Mini Me does produce sound. So now let's talk sound quality. I tested both movies and music with this subwoofer. And to be honest with you, because you have the iWoofer app and specifically the iWoofer Pro app that I use so you can do the room uh, tuning and everything like that, you can kind of make set this up to do whatever it is you want it to do. But I want to talk to you about my results because I did this DSP on, DSP off, a lot of different configurations to figure out just how the DSP would actually sound. And I want to give you my recommendations. 
Now, as far as DSP is concerned, the way I tested this was I tested this with frequencies first, then live content. So I tested 20, 25, 40, and 63 hertz. And I chose those frequencies because those are pretty representative of a good, let's say, lower bass and mid bass regime. Now, I did test the DSP with the three different settings, including boomy, linear, and near field. And basically, here are my results. For the most part, I found that with DSP off, I got more output, so 3 to 6 dB, which is audible. But I also got greater distortion, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5 percent. Now, sometimes that was audible, sometimes it wasn't audible. But once I switched over to real life content, what I noticed, DSP on, DSP off, using the different DSPs, I found that for the most part, I like the linear DSP just a bit more than the others. I thought the others were good, but I did like linear a little bit better. But I really like that with music only because it gave me a cleaner, tighter sound. Once I moved over to movies, I actually preferred to turn the DSP off because I wanted that greater output so I could feel the bass within the room. Now I'm going to give you a quick audio sample just so you can hear the difference between the linear DSP at 50 hertz on and off. Hopefully you enjoy that audio sample. And honestly, I should probably tell you this, uh, give you a, a quick behind the scenes peek. Um, when I was recording that particular audio sample, I actually started by recording a 25 hertz sample. And then I realized, why am I recording 25 hertz? Not everybody can actually hear that with their equipment. So um, I had moved to 50, but on the 25 hertz uh, equipment, I actually had the camera pointed at the passive driver. And when I moved over to 50, um, I really wasn't getting much movement. And then I checked the active driver and it was where the movement was at. And I remembered exactly what was going on, which was the slap system. So in that mid bass regime, the active driver is really working. But once you lower the frequencies, once you go lower, the passive driver starts to pick up. So I thought that was cool. And I thought I'd mention that here. Now, all of that being said about DSP on, DSP off, that's just kind of the way I said it for the crossover setting that I had. But obviously you can go in and you can boost whatever frequency you want inside the app and really set it up to your liking so you could have a movie preset and a music preset with DSP on if you really wanted to go that route. I mean, and I think that's the beautiful thing about this iWoofer setup and this subwoofer is the fact that you can really, really tune it to what you want to do, especially with that app. So for that reason, I give it an eight and a half out of 10. It's a nice balanced subwoofer overall. I mean, it's got great balance and I didn't get a chance to do duels. I mean, I got a single here, but I think duels would sound would sound really good, um, to be honest with you, especially once you had them all set up correct the way you wanted them set up. So I think this deserves an eight out of 10 for sound quality, just because you can do so much with the app. Now, like I said, for the flat profile that I had set up, I really found that for the most part, DSP on um, gave me a cleaner sound with DSP off giving me more output. But again, you can tune it wherever you want. So an eight and a half out of 10 for sound quality. Now let's talk value. And I give this a six and a half out of 10. The MSRP on this is $1,400. Now for that price, you get a pretty nice subwoofer. I mean, you get a nice piano gloss black surface finish. You get dual drivers with some cool passive tech built in on the passive radiator, and you get DSP built into the box. Hook up the app, you can mess around with the DSP. I mean, it all works, but obviously there are less expensive subwoofers out there. So I give it a six and a half out of 10 for value. So let's wrap this up. I do recommend the Mini Me DSP P12. I like the fact that it has this gloss black surface finish because it looks quite nice. It also has a small footprint at 15 inches cubed. You get dual drivers with some pretty cool passive tech built in that gives you a lot more bass at lower frequencies. The iWoofer app is very, very flexible, which is again, another appeal of this subwoofer. But all of that tech does come at a cost. At $1,400, it is on the expensive side, but I do recommend it if you can swing it, and especially if you can go duels because that will give you nice balance space in your room. So if you wanna purchase the Mini Me DSP-12 or anything else from Earthquake Sound, use those links in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you guys for watching. We'll talk to you next time.